is the day of my flight. I'm heading out to Dallas in a few hours. I decided to pack my portable astrophotography rig. I've got my Red Cat and my uh, Zuo 294 MC Pro Cool camera in there, as well as my Skywatcher tripod, um, another tripod there. Over here, I've got the uh, Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, of my other uh, photography equipment. Uh, each bag weighs right at about 50 pounds. So I'm hoping that they are both um, admitted in okay at the airport. We'll see. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll be in Texas for about a month working on my play. And uh, there's going to be some dark skies in Texas. So I figured, why not? Might as well just lug all my equipment across the country and try to get some deep sky astrophotography while I'm out there in the Lone Star State. All right, so hopefully um, next time you see me, I will be in Texas. I have arrived in Dallas. All right, I don't know if you can see, but it looks to be a clear night tonight. There's little wisps of clouds. So I've got my portable astrophotography rig here. And uh, one project that I need to do before I do some astro tonight is um, I need to put some more weight on this counterweight. This is only like two point, I think two kilograms. So like roughly four and a half pounds or so. Not enough to balance this rig, which comes out to around, I think eight pounds. So what I did, because all the counterweights are back ordered right now, I bought these really heavy bolts. I'm going to basically MacGyver my way into a counterweight. I'll show you what that looks like at the snap of my fingers. I just kind of gently uh, tape the bolts together onto this counterweight. Uh, let's see how much it weighs. Okay, moment of truth. All right, 6.1 pounds. Now I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to balance that rig. Hmm. <laughs> Guys, I think this is balanced. I can't wait to actually try this. <laughs> All right, wish me luck. Hey guys, so I'm in my car. I just drove out to Harry S. Moss soccer field. It's in North Dallas. It's a pretty open area and there's not a lot of lights on, which is great. It's still a Bortle 8 sky here, so there's not a lot of stars out, but um, you know, we're gonna do the best we can. Got my SI Air Pro connected, all turned on, my Skywatcher AZ GTI. Everything's connected to my Sky Safari here. I'm gonna try to connect my scope now. It's gonna go through here, choose equatorial mode, connect. Okay, so oh, so looks like I'm pretty close to Polaris. Let's see if it will slew. go into ASI Air and I'm going to try to focus now. All right, so I've got my main scope focused as well as I can. I'm going to now start my polar alignment. car and I'm resetting my guiding uh, and having it go through its calibration process. You know, I showed you previously that I kind of MacGyvered this counterweight with a bunch of bolts and nuts, um, literally with a bunch of bolts and nuts. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it will affect my guiding or not, but uh, we're going to finish the calibration and uh, we'll see. I am now guiding. It's multi-star guiding, which is really nice on this ASI Air Pro. Those are pretty good numbers. I mean, total error under one arc minute. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm actually surprised. All right, I'm actually really happy with that. I'm gonna get out of um, guiding. I think we're gonna try for the Crescent Nebula. Um, and do a go-to. Yep, there we go. Let's switch over to the ASI Air. 
So I think what I need to do is do a search in here. NGC 688. Do. Alright. Okay, confirm. It's going to load a test shot. It's a slow load. I had to switch my SIR Pro to uh, 2.4 gigahertz instead of the 5 gigahertz because um, actually I don't have to do that anymore because I'm not connected to AZGTI Wi-Fi anymore. So once this loads, I'm going to check my Wi-Fi. Maybe I'll switch it over to 5 gigahertz. Well, I don't see anything here. Let's, let's try 30 second exposure. Oh, there, there it is. Nice. Okay. All right, so let's just switch this over to five gigahertz. Okay, it's got to auto reconnect. Let's actually do a 60 second subframe and we'll see what that looks like. But right now that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's actually bigger than I thought it would be. So we're just wrapping up our two minute test shot. I switched over to the five gigahertz. So let's see if this loads faster. Oh yeah, way faster. All right, that's what we have. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna actually do a live stacking here um, just for the hell of it. I'm gonna do 180 seconds, that's three minute exposures. Uh, bin one, I'm going to save every frame when stacking and I'm gonna go for an hour's worth, okay? And we'll see what that looks like. Um, and if we wanna go for longer, then we will. But you know, this, uh, this should be fun. So here we go. All right, here's the first three minute exposure. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at that, three minutes. That looks really good. It looks like I'm in focus, right? Guiding is still okay. It's not erratic, which I'm happy about. Yeah, so it's stacked one. It'll tell me if it ignores any. Um, there's supposed to be some clouds coming in later. I'm hoping it's not gonna come through in the next hour while I image this, but uh, if it does, then hopefully what will happen is the ASI Air Pro will ignore whatever bad frames there are. But okay, so this is the first three minutes. All right, I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like maybe after like five frames or something. All right, so let's check back on the ASI Air. It's gonna reconnect. Um, looks like it's stacked six so far. Oh, shoot, you know what? I forgot to turn my camera cooler on. Damn it. Son of a bitch. Uh, my guiding looks a bit wonky. Looks like, ooh, looks like there's some satellites that came through or is that my guiding Eesh, oh my god it does not look good all right so we'll come back in a little bit looks like i have 38 minutes left so i actually like this uh setup here i'm in my car i've got my i don't know if i showed you this earlier but i have my um telescope connected to my uh, cigarette lighter plug-in right here. So it's drawing power from the car battery. Uh, I'm hoping it doesn't drain the car battery. I don't think it will. I mean, I'm gonna be out here for an hour or so. Uh, we will see. Anyways, um, I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos and I'll catch you later. Okay, so we are back. Looks like it's stacked 12. It hasn't ignored any, which I'm kind of interested, find surprising. Wow. You can see something flew right through, but it's looking better. What is that? I have no 
idea. Starting to see the nebulosity surrounding the crescent here, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, God dang it, I really, yeah, I think I might just need to go back and just restack all of these um, and reject some of these frames here. But uh, it's getting there, it's building an image. So it's stack 12, so I have about 22 minutes left. After I finish, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stay with this or if I might choose a new target. My guiding is kind of eh. It started to cloud over a little bit, which probably threw my guiding off. So I'm hoping that it can um, recorrect itself. All right, so I finished my imaging run. I've got 19 images stacked uh, for a total of about an hour. I'm gonna wrap it up here because I think the park is gonna close in a few minutes. Uh, my guiding is still looking pretty good. So I'm really happy with this, uh, this run tonight. So. I'm out here for about a month, so hopefully I get to do um, more. So good morning. Um, as you can tell by my hair, I just woke up and uh, it's the next day. We had a pretty good night last night. Did um, some imaging on the Crescent Nebula and things went well. The spoon is dirty. Um, I'm gonna make some coffee, but uh, basically to recap, I got about an hour's worth of data. I probably could have gotten more, but honestly, I was getting a little skewed out. There are some people in the park. I couldn't see them, but I could hear them, and it just kind of made me a little nervous. So uh, I decided to just wrap up and um, just take what I got. And you know, an hour's worth of data is, uh, I'll, I'm happy with that, I'll take that. Um, especially like last night was more of a test run to see if you know everything was working and it all did. Uh, even my guiding did well, consistently stayed under you know one arc minute error. Especially for my MacGyver counterweight, I'm kind of impressed. So today we're going to process the Crescent Nebula and now it's worth the data, we'll see how we do. So I did a quick process on that single three minute sub with the airplane trails. And you know what? I kind of dig it. I think sometimes, you know, mistakes can end up being good mistakes. This is definitely going to be one of those, you know, share to Instagram as a novelty kind of thing. Okay, so just comparing two stacked images here. On the right is a live stacked image from the ASI Air. Only light frames, no calibration frames. And on the left are 18 good frames stacked in Deep Sky Stacker with darks and flats. I'm a little disappointed the ASI Air did not automatically reject those bad subframes. I mean, they're supposed to, so I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, I decided to process the image on the left, the one in Deep Sky Stacker. Total integration time was 54 minutes. In PixInsight, I did your typical dynamic and automatic background extraction, uh, color calibration, histogram stretch, all that stuff. And then I removed the stars using StarNet uh, so that I could get a starless uh, subframe and use that to clean up the dust moat and noise. Uh, I don't know if I would recommend this way of removing the dust moat, but this is the way I did it. I created a range mask for it and I tried to fill it in the best I could using curves, um, knowing that it doesn't have to be perfect since I'm going to go in later in Affinity Photo and fix it with the clone tool, which I did and here's the final result. So not perfect, a bit overprocessed, and you can definitely see artifacts from the StarNet removal. But you know, this video is not about showing you any perfect images. It's about showing you my process and my challenges as a guy far from home who's trying to image with a portable setup in Bortle 8 in Dallas, Texas. And I also thought, hey, it might be kind of interesting to show you what only 54 minutes of useful data looks like on the Crescent Nebula. So I hope you found this somewhat interesting and I hope you had fun watching it. Thanks for watching and clear skies.